Like from your perspective, how important is it that somebody who is thinking about starting a business own their truth, even if everybody else out there is doing something just a little bit different than what your vision is for yourself? Right. Um, you have to keep a tunnel vision. You have to uh, stay true to what got you to where you are. So for Camille Rose, when I, I was in Target still handcrafting my products. Um, I went to, I didn't know anything about a laboratory. Um, I just got into to Target. They wanted to give me a, a large amount of doors from what I felt comfortable with because I knew I had to still make them. I never had a lab. I, how do you get a lab? I don't know. Um, so I took a small amount of doors so that I can still handcraft. Uh, well, when people started uh, educating me, trying to search for a lab and da 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 da, and, this, and I'm like, okay, I'll do that. Went to so many labs, and they all told me pretty much, this is food. These are food grade ingredients. You don't need that. You don't need to use that. There's a synthetic that will do the same thing. Here's what the, the chemist would tell me all the time. First of all, I call myself a kitchen chemist. They hated that. <laughs> they would say, my grandmother been using these products for, and she's still alive. She 99 years old and ain't nothing. And I'm like, that's fine. And that I'm sure is true, but this is my truth. This is my belief. This is my way of life. And I threw up a website. I'm selling my handcrafted products on this website and my consumers keep coming back over and over again. I dare not get into a big box, big box retail store and switch it up on them. Mm. That's not what I want to do. And getting on the shelf, yeah, got on the shelf, but I need to come off that shelf. And to come off the shelf is a little harder than getting on that shelf. And I don't want to pull no okie doke over anybody that got me on the shelf. You know what I'm saying? So it was extremely important to stay true to my beliefs, my lifestyle. And then I still wanted to be able to use my stuff. I ain't for the synthetic stuff. You know, that's not how I started. I'm scared to put, I didn't want to put that on my babies and I didn't want to use it. So adamant about keeping my formulas, which I own, the same. I have seen so many bomb brands out there that started out so good. And then as they grew, it had somebody in their ear whispering, you could do a little cheaper, save a little money like this, you know? And they go for it. And then everybody's talking, the formulas change. The form and then your sales go down. Mm -hmm. Mill Rose is a premium brand. My prices are premium. The product is premium and it's premium for a reason. I didn't start making my products to even sell, like I'm praising God and, and catching the Holy Ghost and slapping my face that he brought me here. I started making these products for me and my kids, so I'm not gonna skimp on us. I'm not gonna give us a little bit of this good stuff and a whole ton of water. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to, once I threw my website up and gave my consumer what I was using, I needed to make sure that when they go to shelf in any retail store, they are pulling that same thing, the same quality that they got when they ordered from CamilleRose.com. I love that. I love that. I love that. I, I, I want to go backwards for a second. You mm -hmm. talked about mixing and coming up with these formulas in your yeah. kitchen. And this a guy out there, there's a woman out there that's thinking about getting into the beauty space. Uh -huh. and, and, and their first instinct is always to run to a chemist. And chemists are gonna do that's what they the do. That's way to do it. That's the easiest, and that's what most traditional people do. But that takes a lot of money. And I'm here to, here to tell you guys, which I know you already know, it's other ways to do it. It's the easiest way, but it's also other ways to do it. So you just got to do the blood, sweat, and tears, be willing to uh, put the work in. 
And more important, I, you know, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but me knowing just a little bit about the space, when a chemist comes up with the formula, they own it. Is that correct? They own it. When a chemist comes up with the formula, it's just the same as like the record industry. Uh, I could go in behind you and say, oh, I love this product. Did you guys do this? Yeah, we did. Can you do this? And let me put my label on. It's for them. And they, they want to make their money so they could sell. They, they may switch it up, put an extra oil or two in it, but it's for them. Yeah, you know, I think that the people just need to hear and understand. Number one, like you said, be willing to put the work in. Yeah. It might, it might take a little more time, but be willing to put the work in. Right. But secondly, you did this in your kitchen. Mm -hmm. You did it off hours. You didn't even know how to get a chemist at that point. Oh. Where to get a manufacturing plant from. All of these things. And I, I just want you to speak to, if somebody is coming up, whether it's this industry or any other industry, mm -hmm. sometimes you have to start exactly where you're at. Exactly where you're at. Looking at your company now, being able to walk in Bed Bath and Beyond and, and Whole Foods and uh, Rite Aid and Walmart, all the different big box chains you're in now. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody could just, oh, she's successful. Like, like I could never do that. But you started this in your kitchen with the resources that were available available to you at that moment. Not a lot of money. Not a lot of time, but you made the time and you made use of what you had. So can you just speak to somebody who, because one of the things that I've found that just stifle people, they're quick to say, I don't have the time. I don't have the money. I don't have the resource. How do I even get started? Well, how did you get started? In the kitchen. Yeah. And that I don't have the money. Talk just gets to me. And that's, that's not even just for my, biz, my business, what I'm doing or the, in the industry. It's for like even school or college. Like I hear that all the time. I don't have the money. My thing is, you find the money, get the money. Number one, I didn't have the money either. When I started, my husband was a resident and he made, I think residents was making 35K at the year. We had three kids. So no, we didn't have the money either. However, I grew at my own pace and I tell people grow organically, grow at your own pace, whatever money you do get in from your business, invest back. Um, the oils, I think, um, start small, right? So, um, components and whatever it is you need to, 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 to purchase for, you know, to help grow your business. Do so, but do it on a smaller scale. Uh, throw your website up. If you only have 10 products to sell, sell 10. Put out a stock until you get your money and reorder. Grow at your own pace. That is the, the message here. Grow organically. So many people in my industry, whether it's uh, hair, makeup, whatever, beauty as a whole, the retailers, Investors may come at you, give you huge orders. All money is not good money because if you're not prepared to produce those orders, you're in a bind. Now you have to pay that money back plus a percentage over. Take your time. Feel comfortable about your growth rate and your level. Keep a tunnel vision. It doesn't matter what the competitor is doing at all. It doesn't matter. Now, it's okay if you want to go that investor route. If that's what you have in, in mind for you and your business, I'm not knocking that. But if you want to pull 100% ownership for a while, uh, whether it's your formula, whether it's your business, then take your time and don't be afraid to say, no, I'm not ready. The money is still going to be out there for you to get. You know what I'm saying? Just take your time and do what is most comfortable for you. And that's what I did for my brand. Okay, so let's talk about that for a second. Your first retail, was that Whole Foods? 
Whole Foods was my first retailer, but it wasn't chain wide Whole Foods. It was the Whole Foods in my local area. So what I did was I went to the Whole Foods stores and I spoke with their buying manager and I said, I'm locally owned, you know, test me. And they did. Um, Whole Foods will put you through hell and high water because you have to submit everything. And they, are, they have their own set of chemicals that's, that's testing uh, the product and making sure you are Whole Foods standard. So that was my first. Um, so that was a proud moment because I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm doing it over here. Mm-hmm. You know, I have a Whole Foods standard. And then from Whole Foods, I went into Target. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.